Hello again guys, my name is Seafood Mike, and this is another episode of The Dragon Yawn. Um, we're coming to you today from the massive tactical kung fu of mixed martial arts located in Durham, North Carolina. Your first class is free, recommend trying it out. They cover all the different ranges of combat you can possibly think of. I got a special guest with me today, and this is Professor Larry Carter. We just did a very awesome seminar about the one hop kendo buzzsaw drill, a bunch of knees and elbows and stuff like that. And so we're here to let you know a little bit more about him, okay? Because he's awesome. And uh, so we're going to be asking a whole bunch of questions. And by the end of this video, you're totally going to know everything you need to know about this guy or else. <laughs> All right. So my first question for you, sir, is how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm really energized. We just had that seminar. Everyone did great. Everyone learned about us all. This, we did a shot of video about it. I'll have it up on uh, my Kajikemo United YouTube channel, so check that out. Yes, and you have a URL now, so what is that? I don't know. You don't do your URL. <laughs> so go to, just, go to just YouTube. Just do the search. And just search Kajikembo you know, United. Kajikembo United, okay? And it, there'll be links on the uh, Tactical Kung Fu website, so it'll be there. Or I'll put links in the description of this video when I post it. All right, so. My first question for you is um, more on the academic side. Why do we call you professor? Well, actually, it's doctor. Doctor. <laughs> it's, it's a doctor. Right, Dr. Carter. He doesn't play one on TV. He's actually a doctor. <laughs> and it's not that kind of doctor. It's an, like he said, it's an academic doctor. I have a PhD, and I teach at High Point University. I uh, had earned my PhD from Old Dominion University. And I did my master's and my undergraduate and business-related stuff uh, from Virginia Tech. So I'm kind of a local to this area. Cool, man. Yeah. Um, and so your PhD is in? It's in business administration. Uh, it was within the marketing program. So most of the classes I teach are marketing. Uh, I, my PhD also had an emphasis in international business. And I do a lot of... Uh, research in business as well as I teach MBAs and undergraduate research classes. So you teach smart people how to be smarter. <laughs> My guess. <laughs> That's the exactly. way of looking at it. Um, and so you're teaching right now at High Point University. Yeah. Uh, what what uh, classes or what subjects do you teach there? Uh, like I said, mostly marketing classes, um, international marketing, uh, international marketing for MBAs, consumer behavior, uh, marketing principles. I've only been there uh, one year, so those are the classes that I've taught. They're building me a lab, a uh, neuro marketing lab. Um, neuro marketing is all about uh, eye tracking. So when you look at an advertisement or, or do something on a website, it tracks where your eyes go and how long you look at things and in what order do you look at things. Uh, then you combine that with such things as EEG, which does brain monitoring. And when you're looking at something, and the eye tracker is picking it up, the EEG will tell you if you're stimulated, if you're interested, if you're angry, if you're upset, things like that. And there's also galvanic skin response, basically what lie detectors are made out of. So it'll detect responses in your skin uh, to do kind of the same thing as the EEG. So anyway, it's all this fancy uh, biometric equipment. Uh, and uh, like I said, H HPU, High Point University, is building me a lab that we hope to have up and running. So basically, you're finding out better ways to sell people stuff. Yeah, yeah, basically. You know, what attracts people? What gets them motivated to go out and buy, spend their money? <laughs> Man, that's awesome. Now, how long have you been doing that? All right, uh, uh, teaching and acting. Teaching, you, you know what? I, uh, I think I started on my PhD back in uh, around 2000 or so. Um, started at Virginia Tech. And then eventually went to Old Dominion University because I wanted that international business emphasis. And I think I finished around 2009 uh, with my PhD. Uh, and I've been working ever since. Moved out west, uh, worked at Idaho State University for a couple of years. And then uh, Utah Valley University for six or seven years. I actually got tenure there. Uh, then we had a couple of little kids and there was no family out there. And so figured we had needed to move back to uh, be around family, to raise our kids around family. Family's important, man. Absolutely. Um, okay. Oh, so, Anna. Yeah. So that's the academic side. Yeah. But you're called professor because of 
your martial arts thing. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm currently ranked as a professor in Kajikembo. Uh, professor. Now, you know, now tell them like what that like, yeah. actual number. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So professor is a title given to eighth degree black belts. Uh, it goes all the way, and Kaji Campbell goes all the way up to 10. Um, How many of the 10s are there? Well, they, technically there's only one 10th degree, and oh. that's the founder of the Kaji Campbell system, uh, who yeah. is deceased now. Uh, it's Sijo Imperado. Imperado yeah. okay. So what they've done is 9th uh, degree is your grand master, so 8th degree is your professor. And from 8th degree you start wearing a red belt, and notice I have a red belt on as opposed to a black belt. So one through... I took mine off. Yeah, <laughs> one through four are your solid black belts with hash marks. And then from five, six, and seven, you have a combination of red, black, or white, which are the Kaji Kimball colors. And then uh, eighth, ninth, and tenth, you wear a red belt. So eighth degree, you wear a red belt with black on the outside. Ninth degree, you wear a red belt with uh, silver on the outside. And like I said, there's no 10th degree. 10th degree is supposed to have a gold border uh, on a red belt. But what they've done is they've uh, extended that out to senior grandmasters. So you have your grandmaster and then you have your senior grandmaster. So even though they're not technically a 10th degree, they kind of are a 10th degree. So um, within it, that's just Kaji Kempo. Now you told me that you were on the Kaji Kempo family tree three times. Three times, yeah. right. Uh, that's because I come from three different lineages. Um, I started with the Walter Godin lineage. And these are lineages from the original Palamaset students. So Walter Godin, uh, part of his lineage through Martin Buell and uh, Chris Rigoni in Virginia. And then uh, I was training through um, some students who were uh, under the uh, lineage of... of uh, man, I just had a... <laughs> You ever have those? Oh, I had one like 30 minutes ago. Yeah, Roberts. Oh, yeah. James Roberts. Uh, James Roberts is one of the uh, original Palama Settlement guys as well. And uh, so I was training under um, under Bill Odom and uh, Ian Marshall. And I actually tested under uh, Roberts. Uh, and then, most recently, uh, I've been under uh, Mike Sandos, who is under the the whole Sid Ascension, Aldacoscus line. So three times on that tree. Different types of Kaji Kembo branches. You know, started with more of the original hard style Kaji Kembo, and then gravitated more towards the softer stuff, and eventually one hop kendo. All right, so the, because I know you are in Kaji Kembo, so you're talking about like hard style is more of the Kaji Kembo. Yeah, the Kembo karate side. And uh, I know one hop kendo is where I came from, it's more of a mix of both. Right. right. Um. And so the uh, did you ever? I know there's four branches. Did you ever cross into like Tum Pai or Swan Fa or, or is uh, it always just one or the other? I know you're in Kempo as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Well, with the Roberts line, Roberts uh, was stationed out in in um, Korea, South Korea, and so he learned Tong Sudo and Taekwondo, and incorporated that into the uh, Kempo Karate. Okay, the original now, I know you have a rank in uh, Tang Sudo. Well, I do. So you have... Uh, I have a fourth degree in yeah. Tang Sudo through Bill Odom and, and the Roberts line. Uh, and a second degree, Ian Marshall, I, I did Tang Sudo with him as well as Taekwondo and ranked second degree in Taekwondo. And that was a long time ago when I was a lot more flexible and younger and loved to jump yeah, and, and kick and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, big high jump. Absolutely. Place, so that yeah. was my college years, you know, 20 some years ago. Yeah, and so you're also a Kali Salat instructor. Right, I did nice. Kali Salat. Uh, I've done I've done a lot of different martial arts. I mean, I've been in it since I was eight years old, so I'm 48 now. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so, so it's 40 so, years so this is of martial arts. this is a 40-year anniversary? Hell Yay! yeah, 40-year anniversary. Woo! Yeah. So, you know, started in Muay Thai uh, because I'm half Thai and, and actually lives in Thailand. That's um, why you're sitting on the small ball right now because yeah. he's like a half a foot taller than the I am. tallest. Thai yeah. person or half Thai, <laughs> you'll probably meet at 6'3". But uh, I've done a variety of different uh, Filipino martial arts. I love Filipino martial arts. Um, I've done kickboxing, uh, the Joe Lewis line of kickboxing. Um, I've done some Jeet Kune Do. I've done some internal 
Kung Fu, uh, Bagua. Uh, did a semester of Aikido in college. Uh, what else have I done? Uh, I'm sure some other things that escape me at the moment, but so I love martial arts. So You're a certified Taoist instructor. What are you certified to teach in all your ranks that you have? Well, you know, the, the Kali, obviously, um, Tang Sudo, Taekwondo, and Kajikembo. My, my Kajikembo is a blend because I come from three different lines of Kajikembo. So you're going to get some of the hard stuff. You're going to get some one hop kundo. Um, so it's, it's more of a hybrid as opposed to being just one particular branch. And that's kind of why I created this Kajikembo United thing because it kind of represents who I am, uniting different branches of Kajikembo or uh, different communities of Kajikembo together to learn. Cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll, more on the Kajikempo United um, mm -hmm. after, or right, we're still talking about your martial arts. So, like, I, I know you say you can teach all this stuff, but, like, I, I know with certain different uh, systems they have, like, requirements that an instructor has to be. Like, do you have that? If I came to you and said, hey, I just want to learn Tang Soto, can you do that? Like, or is that... I could. But here, here's the thing, though. Uh, me. <laughs> and this is why I... I I enjoy Kajikembo, um, I wouldn't say more than the other arts, but given my background in various martial arts, it was easy to incorporate other arts into Kajikembo versus the other way around. Because Tang Sudo is very structured, uh, so if you were to try to bring in some of the Kajikembo stuff or Kali stuff, uh, there's some resistance there. You know, you'd have to tr uh, figure out a way to, to work it in. Now, on the other side, with the Kajikembo, Kajikembo stands for Karate, Judo, Jiu-Jitsu, Kempo, and Boxing. So just about anything you bring in. I've done, oh, I have a, a blue belt in uh, Great Jiu-Jitsu, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as well. So everything that you learn, you can incorporate into the program, and it's not such a hassle. It, it fits. It, it works. Okay, so I can be coming in, doing my Kajikembo stuff, and then do a Judo takedown, and then do some type of Jiu-Jitsu submission off of that, and it's perfectly okay. Um, now, going off of the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, didn't you want something that you trained in the school or some Gracie somewhere? And Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, when I was with Bill Odom, uh, we were the guinea pig school for the Gracie Combatives program. Cool. And so, we were the ones that were, before it was even a thing, we were testing it out, uh, training the techniques and, and helping them. Uh, are you passing out yet? Tell me, are you passing <laughs> <Yeah>. out yet? <laughs> are you tapping yet? Let me break that off. Wait, no, I didn't break. <laughs> Let's try it a different way. But, uh, and so that's, you know, where a bulk of my uh, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu came from. And the funny thing was, I never got ranking in it at the time uh, because I had left. I'd left for Idaho okay. uh, a few months before the Gracies came in and we actually had, they actually had a formal testing for that. Um, so... The funny thing is, I opened up a school in Utah a few years later and had a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy. He was from the Bering Jiu-Jitsu, and now he's with the Machados, actually. But uh, he came in to teach and uh, teach some classes at my studio. And his instructor was coming to do a seminar in like two months. And so we, we were talking. I was like, you know what? I know some Jiu-Jitsu. And I was rolling with his guys. Uh, I showed him what I knew. And I tested for my blue belt in two months. Usually it takes two years plus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, to test your two, but that's how much jiu-jitsu that I knew, so it was, it was not a problem. Right on, man. Um, now, in all of your martial arts experience, 40 years, all right, um, I know you've been a judge. What events were you judged for? Uh, you know, mostly the point sparring stuff. Um, a variety of tournaments from some in Virginia and even out west. I was uh, judging in, in Utah at some of the tournaments there. And uh, it was mostly point sparring. I, I've done a little bit of judging in, for grappling and kickboxing as well. Um, for the uh, weapons demonstrations or weapons forms for empty hand forms and uh, self defense. So. Explain to the folks how that works. It's like somebody come up to you and be like, hey, you look like a good judge. Well, you know, uh, they pull their judges from the black belts that attend the, the particular tournament, okay. usually. And so 
Uh, and a lot of times I would go there with, say, Mike Sandoz, and we would be the halftime show or something. <laughs> and we would actually do a demonstration of what, you know, Kaji Kembo and One-Hop Kendo is. And so they would pull judges. Uh, they would pull us. Actually, Mike Sandoz, a lot of times, uh, was the, the head guy. He was the head ringleader, and so he would make sure that each of the rings had judges. And anyone can really be a judge as long as they have enough experience. As long as they're a black belt, basically, and they have enough experience so that when they see somebody come up, even though that person's from some other style of karate or taekwondo or whatever, when they're doing a form, they know what a front kick looks like, they know what a good solid stance looks like, and they're able to judge them based on their technique. So that's oh, how it works. Cool. So they, they kind of picked you up from you attending the tournament. So sure. you competed a lot before, obviously. Absolutely. Right? In so. my younger days, <laughs> I loved competition. Yeah, you go through these phases. Um, there was a time when I was all about weapons training and I wanted to learn everything I could about that. There was times when I wanted to learn everything I could about form. Not just doing good form, but knowing what the bunkai, what the application of the techniques were. And there was a time when uh, I, I was into aerials and I wanted to do all the, learn all the kicks and was fancy rolls. Was that your days? Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> young, in my younger days. Now I do it and it's like three days in bed. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's another story. Well, was there any particular event that you like competing in? I mean, it sounds like you had like martial art mood swings. Oh, absolutely, kind of yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I competed in everything, and I was pretty successful. I'd come home with several trophies because here's a trophy for form, soft form. Here's a trophy for hard form. Here's a trophy for sparring. Here's a trophy for uh, weapons. Here's a trophy. For this. And I had a buddy of mine, uh, Patrick Ayers, uh, back in Virginia, and. We kind of went up together through the ranks, and so we were competing against each other, and it was it was a friendly competition. But sometimes he won, sometimes I won. Any, any good stories from that, or just in general? Well, you know, it, sparring or or just uh, being in tournaments is a lot of fun. Uh, it helps you control your nerves, I guess. Okay. Um, but a couple of stories. Tournaments can be interesting. I remember at this one tournament I was participating in in, in Virginia. Uh, this one guy went up and did a form, and it was in a basketball court, and so the floor was real slippery. And he was doing a form, and halfway through the form, he slipped and <laughs> smacked, smacked that basketball court with the side of his head. And he just laid there all crumpled up, and the whole auditorium, the, the whole basketball court, everyone just got quiet. We didn't know what to do. The air release room. I mean, it, it, it was probably 10 seconds, but it felt like 10 minutes. It, it literally did. And the guy just picked himself up, finished his form, <laughs> and walked <laughs> off the stage. Oh, my goodness. So, like, A for effort, yeah, buddy. Just, he probably yeah. like, spent 10, or he was like, 10 minutes total. He probably spent five minutes going, okay, I have to get up off the ground somehow. <laughs> exactly. So he did the honorable thing, finished his form, and... and uh, pretended it had never happened. <laughs> yeah. I don't, think, I don't think he won. <laughs> yeah. But there's always stuff like that. Good now, effort, right? Yeah. Now judging, you know, I was at a um, a big tournament in Las Vegas, and uh, they had the the sparring competition. So these black belts were sparring at the end of the day, and somebody I wasn't judging that particular one, uh, but whoever the judge was called the point for somebody, and the other person didn't agree, and so they started getting into it. Not only no, no, no. The two competitors yeah, okay. started getting into a fight, and you know what's really funny? I mean, it's already a fight. Right? Yeah, it was already a fight, but it was a controlled fight, you know. With so, but they started getting fight. You know, it's amazing how these are black belts. It's amazing how once you start getting into a real fight, all the training and crap goes right out the door. Here they are, just swinging with no technique, and uh, that's not the funny part. The funny part was. There was a group of uh, people associated with one guy, and another group of people associated with the other guy. Woo! They got into oh, it, like it as well. Wearing, yeah. So here we had the, you know, like this uh, uh, soccer hooligan <laughs> fight going on in a very respectable tournament. And so that was kind of, that was cute. <laughs> so I just stood back and so, so, so just, Yeah, I don't I need popcorn. That's so, right. So. I wish I had a bag of popcorn with me. Oh, man. All right. Um, tell us about... Uh, Kajikipo United. That's okay. your thing. Oh, sure. Kajikipo United was something that I created. It actually started off as a club. 
at a university at the uh, Utah Valley University. At every university that I've been a part of, I've always ran a, some type of martial arts program of some sort. So this one uh, was called Kaji Kemba United at UVU. And uh, from that, uh, that club uh, had, had grown so big, and I had some people training at my house in my basement, and we outgrew that. I opened up a studio. So I had the, the students from the university, as well as the students that were training in my basement, and new students um, at my studio called Reliance Martial Arts at the time. Um, and I ran that for a few years. So Kajikema, I kept the Kajikema United and made it more of a some, like an association, an association for people that um, have either trained with me or want to train with me to some capacity. Now that I've moved away from Utah, you know, I've kept the Kajikema United. I've got people still in Utah training. I even I have a couple of black belts there as well. So they're still training, and so they're kind of using um, my YouTube and my, my association as a satellite. Kind of what the Gracie's do with their Gracie University, their okay. Jiu-Jitsu University stuff. And so I've, I upload all these videos um, with all the different uh, requirements, te techniques, and, and, and stuff. And, uh, and they view it, and, and when they feel like they're ready to, to move on, they, you can send me a video, or uh, we can meet, you know, somehow you know, get together, and they can perform. Techniques. Mike knows all about that. I, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, absolutely. So, I'm doing that myself. Uh, so any anybody, say if they're a complete novice, yeah. they can they can go to like your website and get the materials, and they can still sure. try to learn. You can assess them. Just kind of a long range deal. So if they, if they're in the middle of nowhere, yeah, yeah, you can. But they, they can't. You're absolutely right. But that's worst case scenario. Obviously, yeah, yeah. you know. Obviously, you want to come and, and start attending uh, events as you can. Come out and visit me. Um, I'm also a part of, I'm the president of COA currently. COA stands for Kajikemba Ohana Association. It's one of the, the two uh, biggest Kajikemba associations in the world. The other one would be KSDI, um, which is the Kajikemba Self Defense Institute. I was going to ask you, I was like, what does that yeah. stand for again? I should yeah. know this, but there's so many acronyms yeah. for everything. Oh, so many different associations. And those, the, the big ones have events all the time. As a matter of fact, we're trying to put together an event here in this region, maybe for um, spring of next year. Yeah, because, I mean, Kabukevo really doesn't have that much of an East Coast presence, and we're trying to, to build that up there. Yeah. Um, uh, I, was, I absolutely love your vision of what you want to do when you first came here and you first told me all this stuff. I was like, dude, I'm, that, I'm sold. That's great. And so... Reiterate to those people what you've said to me about um, your goal with uh, bringing people together and just making one big martial arts community, not just the uh, COA, but Kaji Kempa with United and everything else underneath that. Yeah, so uh, you know, I'm under the principle that, hey, we're stronger together as, as a big cohesive group. And so with, with Kaji Kempa United and even with COA, it's all about connecting people. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is I'm reaching out to all the, the regional schools, um, reaching out first to the Kaji Kempo related schools and then expanding that out to the Kempo and the Karate schools, whoever's interested, whoever wants, wants to uh, share knowledge, basically. Uh, get them together and, and start doing seminars, um, have a, maybe a revolving uh, seminar going so that one instructor is teaching one thing and the next seminar someone else is teaching something else. Uh, mainly it's just so that people don't have an excuse to run out of material. We keep things fresh for the students, uh, for all the students, because everybody has a different perspective or expression or experience in the martial arts. And they all have their, their specialty areas. And so they can share that specialty area and uh, make, make people more aware and more proficient in those areas. Yeah, and so... And being Kaji Kempo, Kaji Kempo was a mixed martial art before there was a sport of mixed martial art. So even as like yeah. a, a black belt, it's like I've only got maybe 12% of say judo or something like that. So sure. bringing in uh, another judo thing, I, mean, I want that other 88% just to, to know more stuff. There's always more stuff. So that's kind of what you're... Yeah, absolutely. Like, Kaji Kempo was the first American martial art invented in Hawaii. Um, 
back in the 1940s. And it stands for, like I said, Karate, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, Kempo, Boxing. Originally Chinese Boxing or Kung Fu, um, but that's expanded out to other types of boxing, including you know American Boxing, uh, Filipino Boxing, Panitou. Muay Thai. Yeah. Yeah. So, been to that. so, you know, really, you can you can find uh, just about anything in, in terms of kung fu. Uh, the tum pai, tum pai was all about internal, adding internal kung fu. You know, bagua, shing yi, tai chi, the three internal um, martial arts. So it's all about evolving, adding, and making things better. Which is really like the goal been yeah. saying it for years the moment you stop trying to get better is the moment you start getting worse so we're always trying to get better as a martial art and as people yeah even me with 40 years of martial arts experience i'm still the lifelong student i'll gladly you know walk in and learn something new that's why he's picking up ranks like they're pokemon man he's got so many of them <laughs> nah that's just uh something that happens from uh, loving the martial arts really yeah so. cool uh do you have anything else to add uh, nothing really comes to mind, you know, you know all my deep dark secrets and, and stuff, so I can't think of anything, but uh, you guys know how to get in touch with me. Yes, uh, and you got a Facebook page, do you know the Facebook backslash, is it Kachi Kimball United? It's Kachi Kimball United. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so just do a search for Kachi Kimball United on Facebook and uh, YouTube for the videos and, and you should be able to reach out. videos. And, and we're got, trying to grow more. Yeah, I got, I'm posting more, and this is going to be one of them. I'm posting lots of videos, so um, my YouTube channel is Hot to Cool Kung Fu Mixed Martial Arts. Definitely subscribe to me, subscribe to him, okay? <laughs> like us on Facebook. Um, I've got Twitter and Instagram, which you can follow. I think you have an Instagram, right? I do. I don't use it, but I have I mean, one. Yeah, so... I use you Facebook. Know, get on Instagram and just like poke at him and be like, hey, you need to <laughs> do something, do something. Um... And I think that covers like all of our social media outlets that we have. Um, you can I'm also like, pick up the phone and call me. Yeah, that's true. He, <laughs> just, he is a phone call away. Uh, and an email address. You know, you can always email him as well. Um, so, yeah, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for the awesome seminar that we had uh, earlier today. We're gonna, He's going to be posting videos of that. I got a couple of videos where I put up a phone. It's like, this is cool. Um, I might post those on Facebook or something like that. But, um, mm. yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you for, for coming in, and hopefully we'll do more stuff here, talk more martial arts. He's going to be around. You're only, High Point's only about an hour. hour from here. Yeah, yeah about an hour from here. It's not bad at all. Um, all right, so this has been another episode of The Dragon Island. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been very informative. It's been awesome having him here. We're going to do more stuff like this. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, follow, all that stuff. And remember, Tactical Kung Fu First Class is free. You can try it out and we got lots of stuff, including more stuff that he just told us. Take care. Good night, guys. <laughs>